When I'm evaluating functions, what that means is if this is giving me two pieces of information. It's saying take the f equation and plug in negative 4. So here's the f equation, and I'm going to plug in negative 4 wherever I see x. So f of, so we say f of negative 4 is 3x, right? Look, I'm plugging in for x squared minus 7x. Okay. So this is the tricky part right here, and it's a really common mistake to do 3 times 4 first, but we don't do that, right? This is multiplication and exponents, and if we remember, right, when we have our order, order of operations, the exponents comes first before the multiplication. So I'm going to do this first. Okay, that's negative 4 squared. That's negative 4 times negative 4. That's positive 16. Negative times negative is positive. And then here, I can bring this down, or I can just go ahead and do this multiplication in this step. This is negative 7 times negative 4. That's positive 28. So this becomes 3 times 16, which is 48, plus 28. Add it up, and I get 76. Okay. Evaluate g of 3. This time, I'm taking my g equation, and I'm plugging in 3 for x. So this is 2 times 5 to the power of 3. Once again, exponents first before, before multiplication. So this is 5 to the power of 3. That's 5 times 5 times 5. Okay, you can use the calculator. You can do whatever you need to, but 5 times 5 is 25. Times 5 is 125. And then 5 times 1, uh, sorry, 2 times 125 is 250. Okay, both of these problems say factor completely. Okay, so the first question you always ask yourself, always, always, is, is there a greatest common factor? And I'm looking and I see, let's see, is there a number that multiplies to 2, 8, and 42? And the answer is, yeah, 2 multiplies to 2, 8, and 42. So let's take out a 2. 2 times what is 2x squared? 2 times x squared. 2 times what is negative 8x? Negative 4x. 2 times what is negative 42? Okay, and if you're struggling with this, like, you can just grab a calculator and do 42 divided by 2, right? Or you can ask yourself, 2 times what is 40? Oh, that's 20. 2 times what is 2? Oh, that's 1. Okay? And then it says factor completely, so um, it, we're not just taking out the greatest common factor. We also have to ask ourselves, okay, like, can this be factored? And the answer is, yeah, it can, right? This is our, our deal where there's just x out in front, so that x, sorry, x squared out in front, so that x squared is going to come from x times x. And then what I'm looking for is two numbers that multiply to negative 21 and add to negative 4. So those numbers are going to be positive and negative because um, it's multiplying to a negative. And the numbers I'm going to use are 3 times 7. 3 times 7 is 21. And if I subtract those numbers, uh, they become 4. So, and then I want it to be negative 4, so I'm going to make the 7 negative and the 3 positive. And this is factored completely. There's no more factoring I can do. Here's another one that looks different. And this might look unfamiliar, but it's not really, right? Like, I'm just going to still ask myself, is there a greatest common factor? Is there a number that multiplies to 15 and 45? And the answer is, yeah, 15, right? 15 times, fifth times 1 is 15, and 15 times 3 is 45. So look, 15 times what is 15, right? Because now remember, I'm, I'm going to have two terms in here, because when I multiply here and here, I want to get this term and this term. So 15 times 1 is 15, right? And 15 times what is negative 45x? Okay, well, 15 times a positive times a negative is negative. 15 times 3 is 45, and there's an x. So this becomes this, 15 times 1 minus 3x. Okay, this sh table shows a blank function, linear exponential quadratic. So what I'm looking for is, what's the pattern? And I might think like, oh, okay, the number's getting bigger, so it's either adding or multiplying. So let's see, 4 plus 8 is 12. If I add 8 again, do I get 36? Oh, no. Hmm, must be multiplying. 4 times what is 12? Oh, 4 times 3 is 12. Is 12 times 3 36? Yes, it is. Is 36 times 3 108? Yes, it is. So this is multiplying, right? The pattern is multiplying. And so that is exponential, right? The exponential pattern is multiplying. And the linear pattern is if I have adding. And like the quadratic is like, meh, the other one. Don't worry about it. OK, now the equation. For multiplying, the pattern, for exponential, right, the pattern is always like this. It's the starting point times the rate of change to the power of x, right? This is the starting point. And this is, it's called the growth factor. 
Okay, and why is that? Because I'm starting with a number, and then I'm multiplying it by 3, and then I'm multiplying it by 3 again, and then I'm multiplying it by 3 again. So that's what changes here, right? As this x gets bigger, I multiply by 3 again, and again, and again. Okay, so in this case, what's the starting point? What we have to look for is where the x is 0. That is the starting point. Okay, so in this case, the starting point is 12. So the equation is y equals 12 times, right, the growth factor to the power of x. And what's the growth factor? Well, this is growing by a factor of 3, right? I'm multiplying by 3, multiplying by 3.